Welcome to Undercover Arts Live, where you can meet the artists, chefs, performers, and organizations who shape the culture of Southern Arizona. Saka strengthens the bonds between people, place, and purpose through collaborative, arts-driven experiences. You can support Saka by becoming a donating member at Saka.org. Art inspires. Culture unites. Welcome to Undercover Arts Live. My name is Kevin Larkin, manager of Catalyst Arts and Makerspace here at the Tucson Mall. And our guest today is none other than world-renowned illustrator and scratchboard artist, Paul Hopman. Welcome to Scratchboard University. I'm really passionate about seeing people of all ages express their creativity. And the art form I choose is the art of scratchboard. I'm an award-winning, internationally known artist, and my formal training was 20 days at the age of 19, and I've been practicing ever since. It led me to develop a series of videos on exactly how I do what I do. So I look forward to sharing this all with you. Paul, where are you joining us from today? Good to be in the studio due to uh, conditions now in, uh, throughout the United States. So I'm uh, creating more art. I know we're used to seeing you in Catalyst. I mean, you teach classes in here. You've been in here, I don't know, dozens of times. You've done demos. So it's I've never actually seen your house, which is kind of cool because is that, uh, I'm sure you have artwork scattered all around. I do. Yeah, you know, I haven't uh, I haven't utilized the ceiling yet, but I've got a lot of pieces. <laughs> <laughs> so you are a scratchboard artist and illustrator. You're the founder of something called Scratchboard University, which we'll get into when we uh, talk a little bit more about where you've taken your career. But first, I would just like to ask you, how did you get into art and then scratchboarding in general? It's it's kind of an art form that not a lot of people hear about when they see it. Um, like when I saw it, I immediately knew it was scratchboard, but I actually know nothing about it. So tell us a little about about, about yourself and uh, how you got into into your career. So oh, um, it was really probably about an eight second conversation. <clears throat> My father said, well, is it going to be college or art school? I looked at him and said, art school. I wasn't I wasn't a fan of traditional education. Um, so I took a flyer. You know, born in the <clears throat> and raised um, in the Chicago area. So I wound up going to the American Academy of Art, which was in Chicago. So I could train five days a week and wound up there. Did you have formal training in, in like the classical arts and drawing and painting and all of that? Graphic design? So great question. Um, it's required by anyone at that time when I went uh, to school. Um, it's a nine month course called fundamentals. So every month you had a different medium. You started with life drawing, then you moved on. Then it was simple, um, simple exercises, hand lettering. And then I would move through the different medias. Um, the seventh month, it's a nine month course. So the seventh month I had 20 days training and I hit. I could do other art, um, but I wasn't really satisfied until I hit Scratchboard, and I've been doing it ever since. That's amazing. So you just went in there not knowing what you wanted to do, just see what was calling to you, and Scratchboard was the one that that uh, I, you got I obsessed had, with. You know, I was really, uh, I just went for it. I, you know, I, I can't, <clears throat> it was in defense of traditional education. After you discovered it, I mean, I noticed a lot of your work, um, which we'll show some pictures as we go through, uh, deals with animals. So being in Chicago, how did you get inspired by animals? Were you, are you a nature guy? Do you like to go on hikes? Do you spend a lot of time outdoors? Well, uh, you know, it wasn't. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm the eldest of 12. So um, spent a lot of time at home. Um, and it was, a, it was a thrill to jump in our vehicle. My dad had a van one of the early vans in life. 
and we would go to the forest preserve. So, you know, my, my um, viewing of the animal world was rabbits and um, squirrels and occasional garter snake, and that's about it. And then we started taking trips. More family load up the, the van, and we'd go off and do, you know, went to the Brookfield Zoo. I, I was stunned. I have no concept, even though I see, you know, you go through traditional education, you see the uh, National Geographics and there's animals in there, all the different magazines, but to see a term wild animal kept in captivity, I was stunned. And the the, all the different species and sizes and then, you know, learning more about them by the, the zoo, all the zookeepers, we would talk to all the kids, so. You know, and, and I'd go home and I'd just dream about it. So when you when you got started getting into animals, I mean, a lot of your work is based off of photographs, right? So you start with the photograph and then you transition that over to a scratchboard piece. Did that? Did you get involved with photography at that stage too with animals? Did you start taking pictures of them? I, I did, but you know, um, you know, I had a camera, but it was really. A, not very well. I mean, it was more to take graduation pictures and things like that. And the quality wasn't near. And photographer really, I mean, I've taken photographs as I travel uh, accordingly, but I'm not a photographer. Now I know what I'm looking for. Now, um, for reference material, I meet and go online and find world-class photographers. And what I do is I ask them for permission. Hey, I'm, I introduce myself. I'm a scratchboard artist. These are my works. For the rights to reproduce uh, your photo, because you need rights. You can't just take things, and uh, especially now. I mean, you can do it if it's only for your personal gratification or you know, family, etc. But now to take and actually market it, you know, that's infringement of copyrights. So you have to be very careful. And I've done that. And so the benefit for the photographer is they get the first signed edition print framed. And on the certificate of authenticity on the back of my work, I credit the photographer. When you take a photograph in, and uh, turn it into a work of art through Scratchboard, can you show us a little demo? Do you have something right there that you can show us? Oh, he's prepared. <laughs> so um, 10 years ago or so, in 2008, we went from Chicago to the uh, Florida for two years. So at that time, the market had crashed. People were not buying art. It was a disaster, dot, dot, dot. So what I started doing was pet portraits. And here's an example. And then I turned it into a greeting card. So here's Molly. So I can do other art forms. Um, so now what I've done is I've taken Molly and now I'm converting it into and taking a time lapse into a scratch board. Oh, so you created, you created both of these works. I did. Based on a photograph. But, you know, like, like people ask me, well, um, where do you get your subjects? You literally can go to, you know, Walgreens or any store, Costco, um, fries, Boshes and buy greeting cards. You like the illustration? Turn it into. So it, it's whatever you like. I mean, some people like landscapes. Some people, I, I favor animals. Um, we have a dog. We've had dogs all throughout the, you know, our relationship, Pam and I. So, um, and have I done my dog? No. It's like the shoemaker's kids, you know. <laughs> They're the last ones to get the shoes. Well, shit, my wife has to stay in line for that one. But um, anyway. I'm already thinking of a scratchboard of my own dog. That uh... well, that's the fun part. So when you know people say, or I show up for a demonstration or a class. Um, if you like, you know, if you have pets, most people do nowadays. Um, so it doesn't matter what the pet, but bring a picture. That's amazing. Of, yeah. of a pet, and then we'll work on it. You know, we'll we'll start it. And I'll show you the process, and then you'll wind up with, 
your first collectible piece of art. In other words, it means something versus um, there's a little bit more attachment than, hey, it's a cute dog. Absolutely. If this works, great. It could be floral. You could picture, you know, do a picture of a rose. That was one of my um, incentives to get a date with my wife was I drew a picture in pastel of a rose. And she looked at it and said, what, what's this all about? Dot, dot, dot. And that led to me popping the question months later. And now we're married. You grew her a rose. You didn't actually present a real rose. Right. Once you do an illustration of a rose, that's different then. Because it, now it's hours to do it. Or it, I don't remember how long it took me. But uh, yeah, I've got several memento that timeline across years of our relationship, my children's relationship. When they're born, I do a picture. I do an illustration and that's their original piece of art. So when you, when you take a photograph or an image and turn it into a scratch board, what is that process like? I mean, what, what's involved? Is there, you know, obviously something to scratch the board with? What is, tell, tell us a little bit about the history of scratch boarding. Like how did it, how did this come to be? What is the process? Well, it's actually the oldest art in the world. And it started with um, a petroglyph. So here's a rock. And they took a hard rock and a soft rock and made a divot. They took the minerals out of the soil and backfilled it for color. It's all over the world. It's the first form of written communication. So what is a scratch board? A scratch board is there's a board on the bottom, there's ink on top, and in the middle is clay, white, soft clay. I take a needle or a scratching instrument, which I have many of, um, and you scratch, you scratch the board. So what happens is you literally take a scratch and you scratch off the ink and therefore you leave a divot in the clay. Just like you would take your fingernail across a piece of chalk and just, it leaves a little V. So A, you can leave it black and white, or B, you can introduce color, and color looks like you can put in pastel chalk, uh, ink. You can use magic markers, colored pencil, so whatever, and then it goes in there. So you now now have you can a leave it black and white, and then b make it color. Then you add the color afterwards after you. Yes, oh, and yeah. you know if, if once you're done with the color or you look at it, say, oh geez, um, I'm not entirely happy you can go and re-scratch it as, right. as long as you use and the key is they have soft hands and a sharp instrument soft and sharp that combination uh, and for the benefit of what i do is videos um and i'm going to do a time lapse so every 10 minutes I, I i took a photo and you could see she's still unfinished right in here so and then I'll take and do an overdub of my voice and explain the whole process, why I'm doing it, what sort of tool I'm using. And then um, so people see it in stages. So it doesn't become overwhelming to say, oh, you go from this and then you wind up here. And you look at the finished piece on all my pieces. Um, how do you do that? Well, you know. X amount of years of experience and the right tools and time in the box. You know, some of my illustrations, the one back of the horse up here, that's Picasso. That's the most photographed Mustang in the world. <laughs> and I've done it several times. Um, and that took about 250 hours. And so the history literally goes back as simple as that. When, <clears throat> In Belgium, in the late 1800s, somebody took and um, they took clay and put it on a smooth board and found out they can scratch it. So it's been around for years. If you go back into Look, um, Look Life Post magazine from the 20s to the 70s, it was all black and white. So what it was, was it was pen and ink and scratch board. I've got, a, I've got a portfolio from a fellow that 
um, called on the advertising agencies and his portfolio sh shows in Scratchboard ads for Palm, Palmolive, Pepsodent, Jim Beam, United Airlines. So it's been around for many, many years. It's just that, and in seventh grade, um, in my age bracket, <laughs> I'll just say, and then even a little later, it was nothing more than a poster board. We covered it with crayons, different colors. We, <clears throat> the teacher took black ink, covered it, and we were told to go home and get our mother's sewing needle or a paper clip or something. When you scratched, all the color came through. And so that was seventh grade for me. I never saved it. It looked terrible. I, I went, obviously I'm not an artist, threw it in the garbage. And, you know. um, I, wanted, I, did, I did want to ask you, Paul. So, I mean, we're talking about the art form and the 250 hours for one piece. Um, you know, kind of what everyone thinks of an, as an artist on how they're in their room working away at their craft. Now, you know very well um, that there's a whole other side to this being an artist as a career thing. And I wanted you to speak a little bit about that. Um, I'm always so impressed with how you present your work. Um, you know, just alone, the work is amazing, but how you how you show up in the world um, with your marketing, with your kind of like enthusiasm for teaching. There's a lot of different ways that artists can show up. and. Uh, I just want you to speak a little bit about how how that looks for you. What's a typical day like? I mean, how much time do you spend on your craft versus how much do you spend time spend trying to tell people about your craft? You know, there's there's a lot to it to have that kind of success. So, could you share any any info on that? I mean, it starts out as a hobby. I mean, for I don't know, probably thirty eight years. It was wedding gifts. I'm the oldest of 12, so it kept me busy. And then, you know, <laughs> friends and family and anniversaries and, and the like. And, it just, you know, and, and I didn't do it very often. So my work was good. Um, and then about 12 years ago, uh, I decided to do this more as a full-time adventure. And I call it an adventure because, it, you know, I had a couple of different things going, but I always graduated back too. And then it really, um, I took a personal course. And what, what I got out of that was somebody up on stage said something that really hit me. And it was, if not now, when? And you fill in the blank. If you're Smart enough? When will I be smart enough? Will I be tall enough? Will I be blonde enough? Will I be, will I be, will I be? And so um, that led me to start doing classes. And the focus has always been on youth because I'm the oldest and it's just tendency. So I would go into, in Florida, I would go into the retirement communities. I call them silos, um, mostly women, um, you know, I do art classes for them in pencil and chalk, not scratchboard, because, you know, it was really, how do you hold a pencil? Because of their arthritic hands. Right. And to see them go back and actually have a, somebody come in and run an art program for them was fabulous because they're all living in little boxes. Then I came to Tucson 10 years ago or so and did the same thing. And then the more I did it, the more I fell in love with teaching and talking about Scratchboard. So, you know, that led me to doing classes here in Tucson. And, you know, I've done a class of 80 fourth graders. And I've got a video of it. So then there was a class of 60. Three of the kids with an hour and a half of training wound up on stage get an award from the mayor at the Festival of Books. Awesome. An hour and a half, you know, some, and you put 80 people in the room, 80 kids, and some people get it right away and others kind of wander around and, you know, they, they, they're not developed in their thinking. You know, they're all, you know, they want to play video games, whatever, their concentration level, everybody develops differently different ages, et cetera. So 
Um, and that led me really to the last two and a half years. <clears throat> you know, it's one of those if not now when comments that really statu- continues to be in my brain. Um, I, I went and I registered and now I have a patent on Scratchboard University. So I decided to take it seriously. As an, educational, as an educational vehicle for you to share this, you, you. Absolutely. And, you know, the, the, the actual footprint, if I could boil it down just a few minimal words is as I travel and I, I would do art fairs around the Southwest and, you know, I've done over 200 art fairs and that's a lot of fun. I was, I'm social. I get out. People like the work. I'm demonstrating live. You've seen me. So, I, you know, I really enjoyed it. There are no art shows anymore. So what do I do with my time? I now have more studio time. When I would travel, I would meet different people and I'd meet teachers. I was in Denver. I was in Arizona. I was in California. I've been to eight different states. And the, the common thread was, hey, I'm an art teacher, but you know, there's no art in fourth grade. There's no art and there's no, in public school, there's no art or let's just say limited art and music in fourth grade. Well, that's prime, you know, and and prime learning years. The reasons why there are many people behind the curtain make those choices. People say budget, but rather than get into all that. So the people behind the curtain are not making decisions for my grandchildren unacceptable. So it's, if not now, when, what are you going to do about it? So I know, I mean, there's many scratchboard artists that are extremely talented that do classes and they hold them over the weekend and they get paid appropriately. It's great. I want this to be a larger conversation. Of arts education for, I mean, it could because it sounds like you're focused on youth, but also elderly. And that, I mean, that's one thing that strikes me whenever you've come to Catalyst to teach is you'll do demos and, you know, um, five and six and seven year olds will come up and start scratching. And then you'll have, you know, a seven year old in your class. And there's just this kind of amazing um, intergenerational learning opportunity there, because I feel like you can't do that with all art forms. You know, it's it's something that you can pick up right away and you can kind of take, you know, you kind of discover your powers with it right away and where they where they'll go. Well, there's synergy, especially when you have a mixture you know, it's, it's more of a, it's a family uh, exercise that really works because the adults are patient and then, the, you know, child. And all, you, here's the action. You're scratching. Yeah. It's hand-eye, hand-eye, which helps develop your hand-eye coordination, which everybody uses, but also the ability to concentrate because the, the ability to concentrate is – getting shorter and shorter and shorter with all of the uh, media, all of the choices, you know, back when I was born and in the fifties, there was black and white TV. We got color. I thought the world was ended. It was amazing. The choices were much, much smaller. You go to restaurants. It's amazing. But the tension span gets shorter and shorter. And now you lose the ability to concentrate as a discipline in your youth. Can I tell you um, a really good news story? Lady that has seen my work bought a piece from me three years ago at an art fair, uh, called me up and said, I'd like to get a uh, scratchboard kit. And the kit looks like this. So it's online. It's on my website, Scratchboard University. So Scratchboard University. So okay. that has the has uh, the boards. It has the tools. The scraping paper has well, everything. Not only the tools, it's the boards. It's multiples. There's a practice board. There's all to start. It's a, it's a starter kit. Really, it's an introduction, and it comes with eleven videos, because. That's where teaching is going. Look at, look at what's happening today. 
you know, it's tough to get on the internet. The internet, all the, all the speeds are slower because there's so many people on it. People are looking at what can I do, what can I do? So the, the story goes further and says, I'd like to buy a kit, but I'd like to buy two more kits. Could you send one to each of my granddaughters? Now she gets online like we are, and she offers to do a class. So it's that family interaction. It's <laughs> do one. My best advice on Scratch Board, do one. Yeah, so you're... So you're saying during this uh, this social isolation time when we can't go out there into the world, we can't go to festivals and all these uh, things that we're used to doing that bring us life and vitality, there is something you can do, and that's art at home, which I think is an important thing to remember. You can, in, you can have- In music, I mean, there's, it's, yeah. art isn't the only, but this happens to be my passion. So um, this is what I'm doing. So I would like to- I'd like to show everyone a video because uh, your classes are just so fun. Um, I'd like to show you a video. That, this is at the U of A. Tell me about, a little bit about this video that we're about to watch. Sure. So the U of A sponsors, uh, sponsored uh, students, not students, but participants in the 4-H class, 4-H organization. So I got a call. Would you be able to do a class? Sure. So, um, well, the video kind of speaks for it all. So I'm gonna go ahead and introduce our guest artist tonight, and we'll be working on scratch board art. And so our guest artist is Paul Hopman. If we give him a round of applause for spending the night with us. It's the artist scratch board. It's something I've done for 47 years or so. I'm very excited because today, we're involved in a class of about 16 youth and it is with the 4-H group, and it's sponsored by the University of Arizona, who thought it was important to have a art class, an art curriculum, so they chose the Artist Scratch Board. The varied age groups was interesting. They got the opportunity to really just super learn from each other. They wound up getting up out of the class, showing each other's work. They really got a sense of personal creativity, like everybody's different, and then they represented their art accordingly. Hi, my name is Grace, and this is the first time I've ever scratch boarded, and this is what I've done. My name is Cindy Jones, and I'm the community club leader for the Tucson Trailblazers 4-H Club. We love opportunities like this for our kids to learn different kind of things that they wouldn't ordinarily have a chance to learn, so it was great. I feel as though it's extremely important. It's easy to do. Uh, my goal is to make a difference. So thanks for just being a part of it all. So that looked like that looked like an extremely fun class. Um, you've te you've taught in Catalyst, you know numerous times and I just love to see you know everyone's imagination go wild when they when they start to get it a little bit um, so as these young artists that you're teaching start to get more and more serious about their art and maybe eventually one day have that choice between college and art school uh, what advice would you give to a young artist that's starting out uh, to try to make this their living there's a lot you're up against I mean right now you can't go to you can't go to festivals you can't go to art shows right now with COVID um, you have to resort to online. How do you show your work? What What are some tips you can give someone um, to really, you know, stand out? Well, that's a long question. <laughs> so, um, you know, if you're going to go into the art field, I, I, so my work is realism. If you're an abstract artist, I, I, I can't offer advice because of, it's not what I do. Composition, uh, if you want to be uh, known and have your education, composition is a real key. And the other one is if you're looking um, to develop your style, go to museums, go to galleries, talk to gallery um, people in the gallery. Say, hey, I'm kind of interested and I do this, that, 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 that. What can, can you tell me 
you know, pick, pick a painting, you know, and just say, can you tell me about this? What makes this a good painting? And then how is it done? And then tell me about the artist. So it really is education. And you can ask, I ask a lot of questions. So ask a lot of questions. And then what to do after that? It's really easy. It's pretty, just start. I mean, I had, you know, I got my first scratch board in seventh grade. Um, it, it, there's a lot of freedom in art or music in the arts, whether you want to dance, whatever your, uh, maybe it's just, maybe not just, but maybe it's bead beating, ceramics. Um, take a course. You're just going to, you know, just be stunned. And then there's different levels. You see a piece of pottery, go into a pot shop and ask them how it's made and what's the process. So it sounds to me like just get started and stay curious. That might be the best advice. Absolutely. I mean, it's, I don't know anybody that at, in seventh grade that figured out, okay, I'm going to be an astronaut. Okay, I'm going to be an artist. Okay, I'm going to be this. And then dedicate their lives. I don't know anybody like that. Um, so the best scenario was you just keep turning over rocks until all of a sudden you get, you get focused and said, what's that? I'm curious. So just continue to be curious. I, I, I'm very interested in other mediums, oil painters. There's photographer, there's Ansel Adams. What makes Ansel Adams, who is at the top of the game, just renowned photographer, what makes his photography so great? And a lot of it is just black and white. Composition, the right light. It's any, any art form, you've always got levels. So start, start where you can and just ask a lot of questions. And it'll all come out to be. Well, thank you, Paul. Um, so we, I really appreciate you getting on uh, our Undercover Arts Live today and, and talking about your, your life and your art. It's really inspiring to see you do what you do. If people want to find out more, if they want to take home a scratch board, um, if they want to start getting into this, uh, this field of amazing art, you have the Scratchboard University. Can you tell us a little bit about it and where people can find out info? Sure. Um, Scratchboarduniversity.com. Easy. And what I do is, it's a website, and, you know, you can sign up for free um, and watch a video if you care to. The other suggestion, and here, this is, today is the announcement. Um, this is complete, and it's a starter kit, even if you're good, uh, but it's a great teaching tool also. Um, I have it on my website for $29.95. So as my give back on the COVID-19 and all of the absence of uh, education in, within the school bounds, now they've got, and I have grandkids at home now too, driving my daughters crazy. Um, I'm, I'm offering, and it's, there's no, there's no code. This is an agreement I have with SACA and the Catalyst is to now the price is reduced $8 and it's now $21.95. So my offer really is today is I'm, I'm about education and growing up with a, a large family. I know what it's like to have a lot of kids at home. Oh yeah. Yep. And you can only send them outside for a short time. Yep. Now you got to get them involved in something they love. Yeah. And then they get hungry, you know, and then you feed them, then you get more energy. And that's a, that seems to be an issue. So go to, it's, it's very simple. Scratchboarduniversity.com. All right. The education. I'd love to see you. You have a question. You can email me. Paul Hotman at gmail.com. Well, thank you, Paul, for your time and your inspiration. And we'll see you back in Catalyst when we reopen. In the meantime, uh, just visit scratchboarduniversity.com. Thank you so much. Keep scratching. <laughs>